Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. What can I do for you? The only song in the series that we have heard Greg Universe and Rose Quartz sing together. Performed in the style of something like an 80s ballad, like most things in Steven Universe, this song is actually deceptively simple, in that there is a lot more to this song than what it seems on your first listening. Now, as has been the case in the past with these song analyses, or I guess with my one other song analysis, I'm going to be discussing what it is that I take away the most from this song. There is more to talk about regarding this song than what I'm going to talk about here today. And as usual, I do welcome you to discuss those other topics in the comment section down below. Also, similarly to my last song analysis, I am going to be putting a PG-13 tag here at the beginning of the video, because like my last song analysis, this video does briefly touch on the topic of sex, and I know that some people find such a topic to be uncomfortable. That said, let's talk a little bit about the history of this song as I've been able to piece it together. Yes, there is actually enough information in the song itself to determine a little bit about its history. It seems that Greg decided that even while he was staying with the Gems, he wanted to continue making music, whether he intended to sell this song as a single or as part of a greater album, or he just wanted to make a music video, it's really unclear. But it does seem that while he wrote the chorus either by himself or with Rose Quartz, he did entrust her to write the one verse for the song all by herself. And it's actually the two of them, Greg and Rose Quartz, that I'm going to be focusing on the most in this analysis. Discussing what it is that this song tells us about their relationship at the time. And then I'm going to touch very briefly on why it is that this song is very literally the perfect lead-in to the episode that contains it. So how do we know that Rose wrote the verse all by herself? Well, the song starts out with Rose and Greg singing the chorus of the song together. Both are smiling, both are moving in time with the music, they're behaving the way that you would expect them to. But as soon as the verse starts, Greg becomes very interested in what it is that Rose is singing. In fact, the first two lyrics that she sings, Human Man, catches his attention immediately because he didn't realize that the verse was going to be about him. But it isn't until a particular line that Greg's behavior really catches my attention. First of all, she calls him fun, but she does it in such a way that it almost sounds condescending. And then immediately afterwards, she sings the line, I hadn't planned on finding you quite this entertaining. Now, based on his reaction, Greg is obviously confused by this line. Until Rose puts it into context with the next sequence of lyrics. I like the way human beings play, and I like playing along. Listening to the lyrics the way that she sings them, watching her body language, and taking notice of the looks that she gives him, it's clear that Rose is singing about sex. She and Greg have initiated a sexual relationship, and Rose has gotten a lot more enjoyment out of it than she initially expected to when she met Greg. There's literally no other way to interpret it between her body language and the lyrics she chooses. I like the way human beings play. Gems being a non-sexual species by default wouldn't have a concept of sex outside of what they observe in organic organisms. This tells us that once Rose came to Earth, she experimented with sexuality and she liked it. And I want to point out that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I know someone is going to watch this video and hear me talk about this and assume that I don't approve of Rose's interest in sex in one way or another, despite the fact that that's actually not what I'm saying here. So I want to make it very clear that Rose has every right to like sex. I do, however, disapprove of the way that she treats Greg through the lyrics of this song. First of all, she flat out tells him at this point about her previous human lovers. She starts out the verse addressing him personally, but when she starts to talk about sex itself, she broadens the lyrics to encompass all of humanity. This, coupled with some dialogue later on that she has loved other humans but never been in love with humans, tells us definitively that she did have lovers before Greg, but that she didn't really take any of their relationships seriously enough to develop them romantically. And again, that's fine. If someone wants to engage in an entirely sexual relationship, that's alright. It's not something that I would personally do, but that doesn't mean that I condemn it. It's the fact that Greg's surprise here seems to suggest that he didn't know that that was Rose's intention, that he was taking the relationship much more seriously than she was, expecting it to go in a romantic direction that Rose herself never really intended to pursue. And it's for that reason that as we return to the chorus, Greg is suddenly very interested in the lyrics, and incidentally this is why I think that he and Rose wrote them together, because now he is asking himself the question that Rose seems to be asking him, what can he do for her that no one else can do? What can he do to prolong this relationship and turn it into something with meaning above and beyond the sexual component? 
And this is why it is a perfect lead-in to the episode that followed. We Need to Talk is all about Rose and Greg starting to communicate with each other about their relationship and about the direction that they wanted to take. And if there was still a question during the performance of the song as to whether or not Rose took Greg seriously as a person or whether or not she looked down on him, it's confirmed through their dialogue later on that she doesn't respect him that she does look down to him, that she was being condescending. When he tries to exert himself as an equal to her, she flat out laughs at him. It is the fact that he confronts her regarding her actions, that he calls her out on them, and makes her reconsider her behavior for the first time probably in centuries, if not millennia, that he finally earns Rose's respect. Because those other human lovers, it would seem that they looked up to Rose, that they treated her as something above themselves, outside of their reach. Either that, or that's how Rose treated herself in their presence, and they simply never challenged her on that fact the way that Greg does here. But rather than treating Rose as something perfect and unobtainable, as something above and beyond himself, Greg treats Rose as an equal, as another person. And based on a reaction, I'm willing to bet that that's the first time that anyone on Earth has made her feel like a person. It's in that moment, I think, that Rose realizes how premature her attitude during the song actually was. She sang those lines, what can I do for you? She sang them to Greg in such a way as to say that she didn't think that there was anything that he could do for her that any other human couldn't also do. And Greg proved her wrong. When you break it down, it's actually a very touching story of two regular, flawed people finding a common ground upon which to build a lasting relationship, despite the fact that the two of them, at their basis level, couldn't be more different. However, all of this is also why this song didn't make my top 10 Steven Universe songs list. Because while this song is the perfect lead-in to this episode, part of what makes it a great song in the context of this episode is lost without the rest of the episode for context. I still love this song, though, for the story that it tells, just through visual cues and context. The subtlety with which all of the story details are included within this scene is masterful. And to be entirely frank, before seeing this episode, hearing this song, watching them perform it, and then sitting through the subsequent events in the episode, I was genuinely confused as to exactly how Greg and Rose worked as a couple. But after experiencing this musical number and watching the episode, those questions and concerns that I had have disappeared. I now understand what it is that the two of them bring to their relationship and why they worked within the context of this series. And quite frankly, their interactions here and in the following related scenes have given me insight into how I feel they might have interacted with each other at key points after this in their relationship. There is a lot more that I want to see of the interaction between Rose and Greg before Stephen was born. But thanks to this song and the episode that it set up, I may want to see those things, but I don't necessarily need to. And I think that's a real achievement. But guys, what do you think of this song? What do you take away from it that I didn't mention here today? Let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below. This has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later. Do you have a theory idea or merely a musing about the show that you'd like me to discuss? You can head on over to my Facebook page and send me a message detailing your ideas, and if I find them interesting enough, I'll be sure to respond. Or you can head on over to my Tumblr page and send me an ask. If it's not something that I've covered before, I'll be sure to answer. If you are on Facebook or Tumblr, I also recommend that you like and or follow me there as well to keep up to date on all of my content as well as any supplementary content that I might post on either of those sites. And if you know anyone on Facebook or Tumblr who might find my content interesting, please share it with them. I'd really appreciate it.